But this can be applied to any kind of range of scenarios, right? We can apply this to Shopify, we can apply this to Amazon. Uh, in general, this is kind of a standard e-commerce case study where we're looking at the effect of a larger platform like Facebook influencing its network effects into driving new business into different kinds of features. What's up everyone, it's Jay here. And today we're gonna go over a data science and machine learning problem centered around e-commerce and customer success. Today we're gonna determine how we can measure customer success quality through a chat box on an e-commerce website. So this kind of question is asked by companies like Meta, Shopify, Amazon, just to determine how you might tackle an e-commerce or customer success scenario that sounds at face value, kind of like a business case problem, but then how you can apply machine learning to it. And technically this kind of problem, we have to understand that there isn't just one right answer. Instead, the interviewer is actually trying to understand how you think about this problem. The other thing that I wanna mention is that depending on the context, this problem can be approached in very different kinds of ways. If you think about measuring customer support quality, a lot of that can be driven by high level or very deep technical machine learning. But at the same time, if you're interviewing for a role that's on a more of a management level or more of like an analytics or kind of consultant kind of role, then it's gonna be more about abstracting away the machine learning and then applying it to a business problem and understanding what the business objective is. In this case, I think it's gonna be more so of kind of a business case question where we're applying high level machine learning to it. So let's just jump into the problem and figure out how we're gonna solve it. All right, let's say that you work at Facebook. Your team is focused on helping small businesses increase sales through the Marketplace app on Facebook. How would you determine the customer service quality through the chat box for all interactions involving small businesses selling items to consumers? So right off the bat, we can see that this problem is around a larger platform, in this case, Facebook, then trying to integrate like a new feature, which is the chat box for businesses to sell items to customers, right? So in this case, it would be Messenger, right? But this can be applied to any kind of range of scenarios, right? We can apply this to Shopify, we can apply this to Amazon. Uh, in general, this is kind of a standard e-commerce case study where we're looking at the effect of a larger platform like Facebook influencing its network effects into driving new business into different kinds of features. So let's jump into it. All right, so I've already done a little bit of the clarifying questions, but first off, what we always got to do is we got to clarify the questions, right? We got to understand exactly what the goal of the business is. And as I said before, I believe it's just to basically uh, expand the business presence of Facebook into small businesses, allowing e-commerce companies to sell products on Facebook. So how do we actually measure customer service quality? Uh, is it through sentiment? Is it through survey data? What kind of data can we extract right now? So we know that there's gonna be a chat box between uh, users on the platform and then businesses uh, and then their customer support reps potentially. So how do we actually measure that quality? And second point is why do we wanna measure that quality? Like how does that affect the overarching business, right? Uh, and in any kind of these case questions, we always have to ask why, 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 right? Like. Why does this matter? So if I were to jump into it a little bit more, um, let's talk about assessing requirements here, right? So as we said before, we jumped into why does it matter? So how does actually improving customer service impact the business here? Because generally, if we want to measure it, then we're assuming that this measurement of customer service within the chat box is then helping uh, the small businesses or helping Facebook in some way. One thing could be, is it for early development of e-commerce product at Facebook? Is it for us to assess product market fit in which we can actually create this? So we want to ask the interviewer, like, you know, what's the goal of this, right? Um, is it for evaluating a new feature in the existing platform, as we said? Is it growing commerce on Facebook as large as possible? Or is it just making sure that the existing small business on the, on the platform for this uh, marketplace app are being retained because they're actually using this chat box and they're finding it's a great feature for their customers uh, to actually get more intimate access with the business itself, right? And so these are all kind of like the requirements that we have to assess and understand uh, to understand which one matters the most. So I would ask these to the interviewer and then the interviewer can respond, right? They can tell you what kind of stage of the business it is, but because we don't have an interviewer here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make some assumptions right off the front. Basically it's for, uh, we can propose our own solutions. So let's propose that uh, the businesses are already on the platform on Marketplace and that we basically wanna measure customer service quality to see how it impacts the business goals and business retention, right? 
So for us, what we can do is we can propose a sort of quality metric, right? A North Star metric. And so for me, if I'm trying to make sure that businesses are retained and they sell more inventory on Facebook Marketplace, then I want lower refunds from the chat box. I want higher customer satisfaction. I also want reduction of churn, right? So I don't want these businesses to churn and I also don't want these customers to churn. So for us, what we can do is we can build a model that can basically correlate customer service chat box features to this North Star metric that we just combined. And when I say North Star metric, it's me taking these three metrics right here, the lower refunds, higher customer satisfaction, and reduction of churn, and effectively uh, combining them into a weighted average that I care about that will affect the business at its current state, right? So if I'm Facebook today in November of 2022, right, where we are effectively in some metaverse building mode, uh, then I would um, assume that the ultimate goal is basically lower refunds, reduction of churn, high cash flow as a maximum, and probably a little bit of higher customer satisfaction because that's also a dependent variable based on, you know, reduction of churn. It should, you know, go up anyway if we focus on lower refunds and reduction of churn, right? If I am in growth and product development mode of Facebook, I'm like, okay, marketplace is kind of new. Uh, we're trying to see if it's actually going to work. Then our goal of this chat box in measuring quality is to push the higher customer satisfaction so long-term growth is possible. So that's how I would think about it and that's how I build the model. So how do we build this model, right? And as I said before in the introduction, uh, this is kind of how we're applying that high-level machine learning to the problem itself. So for me, what I'm gonna do is basically assume that the model is gonna be kind of a black box, uh, not a black box model, but we need a model that will basically showcase the feature weights so that it can give us some sort of intuition. So if we think that the end goal is to understand and measure the quality and in order to improve the business, then what we actually have to do, right, is to actually get back the different features that matter and then communicate those to the customer service representatives in some sort of way of either improving the ones that are bad or firing them or basically finding the good behaviors or the good kind of techniques and double down on them uh, in the customer service chat box, right? That leads to our outcomes right here of lower refunds, higher customer satisfaction, and reduction of churn. So uh, for example, we can take any part of this data, right? We can just basically uh, take the text data between the two customers, customer survey responsiveness. Uh, we can look at the length of the chat itself, and then we can figure out which one of these uh, features actually corresponds to these kind of outcomes. And then we can look at the feature weights as well. Uh, one thing I also want to measure is that, uh, mention is that in the very beginning, when we talked about how we measure customer service quality, we talked about kind of like, okay, we could probably impact it through some survey data or sentiment, right? Uh, but both of those are at the end proxy features for these kind of outcomes that we actually care about uh, the business, right? And so whatever kind of correlations we can find that are most related between, um, let's say, sentiment analysis and our North Star metrics, that's the one that we're going to lean into, right? So we can apply sentiment as like a feature right here under text data. Um, just for us to be able to get a variable that we can eventually use for a model down the line, right? Uh, and obviously, you know, sentiment itself is also a little bit of a dependent variable because you need to have text to predict the sentiment of the customer going forward. But uh, for the most part, we're merging all of these variables together to then uh, discover exactly what it is at the very end that we have to do. So for the validation phase, this is the last kind of phase that I'm talking about when uh, discussing this kind of case question. Now I have to validate exactly if our solution is going to work or not. And I think this is a part that most people struggle with because uh, they know that they built this model, they can tell the interviewer that, then the interviewer goes, now what, right? Like, what are we supposed to do now? And for me, uh, what I would say is we follow up the solution, right? The actual solution that impacts the business. In this case, it's creating a rubric or a model that the customer support has to follow given the feature weights that we extracted from the model, right? So let's say that we determined that responding within 10 seconds leads to a 10% improvement in customer satisfaction. Uh, let's say that we also discovered that um, using the word thank you, you know, after every single interaction increases retention. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's probably about solving the actual customer inquiry as well, right? And we can add that as a feature and maybe how fast we solve the inquiry. So let's say we have all these weights. Uh, then we create a rubric for customer service to then kind of um, use to follow in their future patterns. And then we can A-B test the 
application of the rubric for let's say half of the customer support chat boxes in the future versus um, the regular method that we we're using before, right? And the whole goal here is the fact that we can actually see what kind of features impact our North Star metric and then apply them, right? Um, so if we actually see that this leads to increased value, then that's a great way to test it out. Now, obviously, I think uh, one more thing, a couple more things that I want to mention before we end this kind of case study is that I'm talking about very large scale applicational ideas here, right? That require a lot of movement, right? And so if you think about the leverage that you would have, if you're actually implementing that yourself as a product manager, you have to one, affect hundreds of customer support agents. You're talking about building a model with machine learning engineers and data scientists at the same time. And lastly, you're also trying to understand and measure a lot of these uh, metrics such as refund, satisfaction, and churn. So this is a huge project. And I say like, it definitely has to be scoped differently depending on who's asking the question, right? So if it's a big tech company, then uh, they have this leverage. If it matters, then we have to say that impact is proportion to like what the cost of doing it, because the cost of doing this is actually quite high, right? But if it's for more of a startup, then we're gonna give more of a more practical answer towards measurement, right? Because for a startup, we're moving fast new things. And all this might be something that we could, you know, use for product market fit, at the end of the day, measuring customer satisfaction isn't as important as just getting, you know, free cash flow and revenue into the business, right? And so there it's something where we have to really nail down on one or two core things that we can test and iterate uh, to see like substantial gains, right? So uh, that's kind of why you see more intuition being developed at startups versus kind of large scale feature planning here. All right. Thanks for checking this out, everyone. If you guys like what I did right here, please let me know. I'm adding this comment to the interview query site and so everyone can check it out. And and we'll probably come up with this as a video solution as well. But uh, if you're interested in more case studies, please check out Interview Query. As you can see from our overarching platform, we have lots of questions, uh, lots of solutions as well, uh, not just, um, and you can go through and kind of filter by different kinds of companies, question tags, and other things like that. So please uh, come check us out. If you're preparing for an interview or you're looking to just upskill yourself in data analytics, financial analytics, please come check us out because we are the biggest platform for data science. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you guys next time.